Okay, we're gonna um, give you a quick demonstration of using your magnetic um, hold down system for your build plate on the engine HR and also how to trim the heated chilled vacuum bed. So as we showed in a previous video, the um, this is this setup is designed to hold a standard four inch by six inch quarter inch borosilicate glass plate. These magnet plates snap in and put lateral pressure to keep the glass in place. Now this system is actually very versatile. Well, let's see, we can actually store these right here on the side. Be careful not to pinch yourself, those magnets are strong. So we have uh, registration holes all around the perimeter. This frame can be removed and these holes can be used for whatever purpose you want. And you can even, um, you can insert screws from the bottom through the captive nuts to be registration pins sticking out on the top. So let's say you have a piece of um, magnetic steel that you wanna use these magnets to hold it down. You can drill holes in it and use these as registration pins so it goes in the same place each time. And obviously you can also 3D print or machine any type of fixture you want to follow these hole patterns around the outside. And the dimensions of these holes and STLs for these printed parts are available if you want to replicate them or make your own versions. So the next thing I want to talk about is how to trim this bed. See there are access holes in the top. These access holes allow you to put a ball end hex driver down to your tramming screw. And similar to the way you would trim some of our others, um, you've got a tripod system. There's one screw in the back, two in the front. So the two in the front allow you to, um, to adjust your tram. So what you want to do first is I'm going to turn this nut slightly to loosen it. That's your locking nut. Turn this one to the left a little bit to loosen it. And now you see that we have some play. So in order to raise this corner, I can turn the screw to the left. Then likewise, when it's in position, turn the nut counterclockwise to lock it in place. Then when everything's good, you turn this one clockwise and that locks the whole assembly together. So we're going to go through a real quick routine to show you how to determine your level. So I'm going to home my X and Y. I'm going to jog over with my X. I'm going to go forward with my Y. Now the pivot point is in the rear center, so I'm going to walk this up to be just over the center and the, let's see. I want the tip of the gauge to land on this flat spot in the back. So that looks good. So now I'm going to drop my Z. All right, and I'm gonna to continue to drop my Z until I have a zero. I just went back to the fine move, so okay. So now I'm at zero. So now what I can do is I'm going to raise my Z by 10. I'm going to go forward. Whoops, wrong way. I'm going to walk the X over. And I'm gonna check this, make sure that I'm not in the, um, the well plate groove there. Oops, I'll make some all the way back. So now I'm going to raise my Z back up. Oops, wrong way. So you can see I'm a little off. I'm a little past the zero. And that's because a minute ago I actually changed that when we were when we were messing with it. So I'm gonna get the end of my ball driver. You see I'm going to turn the screw to the left. Oops, sorry, went the wrong way there. reading my indicator backwards. There you go. So turn the screw to the right and low. And you can see it's going to be a little bit of trial and error. You're going to turn the screw until you get to just where you want to be. Okay, so now we're back on zero. I'm going to lock it down. A 
Okay, so now we're back to our original fan position. And so all you would do is triangulate. You would go from the back corner to here to here and back to here. And, and usually within two or three passes, you can get them to all be within one thousandths or I would say 50 microns of level. And uh, you'll be good to go. So now we can raise our Z back up, remove the trimming gauge. And these are pretty precisely ground. You can double check it after you put your um, your glass on. That just depends on what level of precision you need for your application. So now you're ready to print again. All right, so here we are 10 minutes later, we're up to 80 degrees. So within the span of 10 minutes, you can go from below zero C to 80 degrees C. And once again, what you do with this is up to you. The applications are endless for you. Okay, so now that we've gotten the bed cold, let's go ahead and let's heat it up a bit. So we can go in here to our temperature setting. I'm going to set this to 80 degrees Celsius. And we're going to show you some of the temperature range and the versatility of this accessory.